Its name comes from the beautiful waters that surround it, and it calls itself the city of good neighbors. But for what and whom is Buffalo, New York really known? President Millard Fillmore lived there. President McKinley was shot there. 1901, Pan American Exposition. Grover Cleveland was president twice. He was sheriff. He was mayor. Mayor, sheriff okay. of Erie County, Governor of New York. And uh, uh, we have Grover Washington Jr. is from Buffalo. Great sax player. And we also have Chicken Wings. Oh, Anchor yeah. Bar, Frank and Teresa's, yeah. Main Street. Everyone loves a bucket of wings, but a city's identity cannot be based on a piece of poultry. That distinction belongs to the only Buffalo that do roam in Western New York. The Bills are this town's strongest link to the big time. And it's Reed, Reed at the 20 yard line, still on his feet, to the 15, down to the 10, to the 5, and for the touchdown. The Bills put and keep Buffalo on the map nationally. Every city in the world wants to be recognized for excellence in something. Buffalo has become characterized by its, this particular sports franchise. And the Bills are on the brink of making NFL history with a fourth straight American Football Conference Championship. Buffalo smells like a football town. It feels like a football town. The colors, the gray saturation of the climate there, the winds of the lakes, the whole thing reminds you of a football game of the 60s. To walk down the streets of Buffalo with hundreds of people walking to this very industrial, cool stadium that was right there, right there in Buffalo. In 1960, a fledgling team and an anonymous town first made their acquaintance. I don't know if you've ever been in War Memorial Stadium uh, named uh, the Rock Pile. If you can fill it, you could fill anything. Uh, it was the worst stadium in the American Football League. It may not have been much fun for the players, but the Rock Pile couldn't have been more perfect for the fans. There were no rules. People would bring kegs of beer cases of beer. People would bring grills and, and barbecue grills in the aisles. And just that, kegs of beer, tapping it. It was a party, it was a festival. It's the only place I've ever been to when you walked off after a game, we put our helmets on because you got hit with full beer cans. It was nice though, because you could, you know, you'd catch one and have one on the way to the locker room. <laughs> it, it was brutal. Sometimes, uh, you know, if you didn't win, they were, they were very ugly. Never were they uglier than when a certain field goal kicker missed a critical game winner. Wide right, of course. The year was 1966, and the kicker's name was Booth Lustig. After rallying from a 17 to nothing deficit to tie San Diego, the Bills moved into position to win the game. Lustig missed his mark. But four fans who saw him walking down the street later that Sunday did not. I mean, the guys came just walking down the street down Delaware Avenue, and they jumped out of the car and beat him up because he missed the field goal. Should have never missed it. Buffalo fans were unsparing, but they were also hooked. The Bills and owner Ralph Wilson had given Western New York a reason to believe and a collective identity. Ralph Wilson was an out-of-towner who took a chance on Buffalo, had faith in Buffalo, and put this city on the map nationally. Hey, they wanted a football team, and uh, so, hey, uh, you know, I was accepted. Some people called me a carpetbagger, but uh, uh, not after we won a game. And never after they won a championship. December 26th, 1964. The Buffalo Bills against the San Diego Chargers, and uh, 20 to 7. I still have the goalpost, and I have the the uh, padding of the goalpost and a badge of a rent -a cop <laughs> who decided I was not going to have that goalpost. And Jack Kemp led the Bills to victory. Jack Kemp led the Bills to their only two titles, but his greatest contribution to Buffalo may have come later, when he stayed to represent the town in Congress. It was like, wow, 
Ken's still in Buffalo. That's incredible. He stayed in Buffalo. It's a great city. I love Buffalo. My wife and I lived in Hamburg, just south of the city. Fabulous city, great people. But not everyone echoed that sentiment, even after the Bills moved to brand new Rich Stadium in 73. Hello again, everyone. This is Howard Cosell from Buffalo, New York, where the atmosphere is gray and heavy and cold. This is the scene set for the first Monday night football game ever to originate from the city of Buffalo. How do you like our stadium? Very nice. If we can only get out of here.